All right, our next question came in via email, and it reads, why did God use a serpent to represent Jesus when the Israelites were suffering at the camp? Why use a snake? We associate serpents with evil. Pastor Martin, um, you know, I do agree with that last sentence. I certainly associate serpents with evil. I don't like snakes. <laughs> so what does the word of God uh, explain so that we can understand this question and get an answer? Very good. It is true. Like you said, we mm -hmm. do associate serpents with evil. Mm -hmm. uh, after all, even Revelation speaks of the serpent of old called the devil and Satan. You mm -hmm. see, so we do associate serpents with evil. And that's a reference, of course, to the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Genesis there, chapter chapter three, where where a serpent tempted Eve. Mm -hmm. But but the question, the question that is asked here, I believe takes us to first to a reference that Jesus made himself uh, in John chapter three. Jesus is having a conversation with a man named Nicodemus. And it, uh, most of us, if not all, Bible-believing Christians, we know the, the verse John 3, 16, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the verse just before that that makes an interesting comment. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of verses before, John 3, 14. And it says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Now, remember, this is Jesus himself speaking. He says, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus mm -hmm. refers to a story found in Numbers chapter 21 in mm -hmm. the Old Testament. And here we have a story of uh, a situation where God um, sends judgments upon the nation of Israel um, as he sends fiery serpents into the camp. Mm -hmm. And these fiery serpents came and they did, began to bite men and women and children. And, and the people call, cry out to God, say, God, please do something, save us. And Moses intercedes for them. And God tells Moses, Moses, I want you to make a bronze serpent, place it on a pole and put it up, lift it up and high so that as men and women look upon the bronze serpent, they will look and live. And by faith, they will survive and not die. Yeah. And so and so Moses followed instructions and he made this bronze serpent. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting is that the bronze serpent was a, a, a word picture or, or a symbol of the very thing that was causing death in the camp. Yeah. Okay? So so when you think about it, in essence, what Moses was saying, he's saying, look, people, that which is killing you is now hanging on a pole. Mm -hmm. And the poison of sin or the poison of the serpent is killing you. Yeah. But God has put away your sin and God has mm -hmm. put away your, your poison and he has given you a provision to look and live. Mm -hmm. As we apply that to the gospel, we can make this conclusion that in essence, Jesus, think about this, Jesus became sin for us. In other words, he became that which was killing us, mm -hmm. namely sin. Um, the verse I want to take you to now is Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Paul said it very clearly. And I believe this, this answers the question very directly. Notice what he wrote. For he, speaking of Jesus, made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, mm -hmm. that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And so in essence... Christ became sin for us. So when we look upon Christ, we look and live. Mm -hmm. And just like the Israelites look upon that serpent, which was causing death, they looked upon it and they lived because God gave provision to remove that poison, remove that sin. And, and that's what Christ does for us as symbolized by the serpent, which causes death through sin in our lives. Jesus is our Savior and he rescues us.